So I just uh, ended the device and I'm going to, I'll just run it again. If we go into our settings and look at encryption and credentials, we'll get trusted credentials. So all of these certificates that we saw in the file system in that directory where, where we moved ours, they correspond to these certificates right here. And if we scroll down right here, if you can read that, Port Swigger, that is our Burp certificate. Port Swigger is the company that runs Burp. You might not be able to read that, but this is Burp Suite um, Community Edition. Uh, copyright Port Swigger LTD. So that Port Swigger certificate is the one we just installed. If you look at the top, it says System, and right next to it, it says User. That's where you used to be able to install the certificates like the one we just installed very easily. You could just hit Install, and it would install it here as a user certificate, and it would just work automatically. You didn't have to do any of that renaming the file, putting it in the right location. You just hit install, it put it right there as a user certificate, and you were off to the races doing whatever you needed to do. But it doesn't work like that anymore. It Since NuGet, um, it doesn't trust user credentials anymore. It has to be installed as a system certificate. So that's why we had to go through all of those steps to get our certificate installed right here is a system level certificate. So um, all of that to now we can finally actually try to do something with the proxy. So in order to um, proxy traffic, we first need to start a proxy listener. And for anyone that has done stuff with burp with like web applications, this is very like old hat, like you've been there done this 127.0.0.1 is fine that's just the um, loopback address um, and then we're gonna use port 8080 which is the default but you can print you can use pretty much any port you want if there's for whatever reason you want to use a different port it just can't be a port that's used for something else so you can do 8888 if you want or whatever but 8080 is pretty common just because it's the default so now we need to actually point the device to that listener so it actually sees the things coming from the Android device. And now we're going to use another command line flag. So I'm going to restart the emulator again. And I'm going to bring up the command prompt. So... Um, Again, this is another reason why we needed to learn how to run the emulator from the command line instead of just using the interface from Android Studio. We needed to use emulator.exe. We already used the writable system flag. So now we're going to use the dash HTTP dash proxy flag. And we can do 127.0.0.1 port 8080. Um, I talked about setting it from the command line by doing dash HTTP dash proxy, but um, there's you don't actually have to do that from the command line. You can do it from within the device itself. There are a lot of times when you might have to just like turn on and off the proxy um, periodically while you're testing something. If you actually go pull down the menu from the top and hold down on the Wi-Fi and it brings up this uh, Wi-Fi settings menu, this Android Wi-Fi, that's like the emulated Wi-Fi network that the Android Studio um, process sets up for you. So um, if you hit the little cog icon, and hit the pencil. You can go to the advanced options and there's a setting for proxy right here. And um, you just click on that, go to manual, 
And now this is where you can set it to the intercept you have listening from burp. And we have this um, interface set as 127.0.0.1 port 8080. But I talked about it when we were first talking about setting up the emulator and using ADB. Um, there's these alias IP addresses that Android Studio has set up. So we're going to use that same um, alias again. We're going to put the proxy host name as 10.0.2.2 and port 8080. And um, that alias, that is pointing to this 127.0.0.1. You can just go back to holding down on the Wi-Fi icon, hit the cog, hit the pencil, proxy, none, save. You can see here in the HTTP history, we're already getting a bunch of requests going through just based on like these startup services from the Google API that Android does when it first launches. So all of these requests came from the phone going out to the internet, and then this response is coming back from the internet to our phone. We can go to Google. I want to... Google Burp Suite. I'm going to turn on the intercept though. I'm going to search for Burp Suite, hit enter, and then I'm going to forward it until I find that request for the search term. And here's that search for Burp Suite, but I want to change that search from Burp Suite to Android. And then I'm going to turn off the intercept so it sends on all of the requests. And now, instead of searching for Burp Suite, I searched for Android. And that works not just with the web browser, but it also works for just any sort of um, application that you have on your phone. So I have the Twitch app. If I turn on the intercept here, hit Twitch, it's talking to all kinds of different web endpoints. And all of that happens from this Twitch app when you launch it. Up until now, we've mostly just dealt with um, intercepting things as they happen. So turn on the intercept, interact with the phone, and then start intercepting the request, change something in the request, and then it messes up. It does something different than what it was supposed to do when you originally clicked on it. Um, but, you have this under the proxy, you have HTTP history. You can actually right click that request and send to repeater. And you'll notice up at the top that this repeater tab just lit up. And now that request is in this repeater and you can actually send this request as if it came from the device originally um, as many times as you want. This is that request from when I was searching Burp Suite in Google. If I send that now, if I render this, that is the response that I would see on my phone if I had searched for Burp Suite. So I, I just took this request that I sent from the phone probably a good 15, 20 minutes ago at this point when I searched on Google for Burp Suite, and that request was still in my proxy HTTP history. And I just right clicked it, sent it to repeater, and then sent that request all by itself from repeater. And I got the response that I would have gotten if I had sent that request again from my phone. And this is great for anytime there's some sort of um, request that you think you could do something to mess with, to hack, hack it and make it do something it's not supposed to do. This is a great way to do that because you can just have this request, make some sort of edit, like add a script tag at the end of something in the file and send that request. See what that does. Maybe it doesn't do anything. All right, let's try something else. And you can just keep going through that as many times as you need and just keep playing with that request until you 
find something worth reporting or find something that you think is fun or until you are satisfied that there's nothing to find here. Burp is a very powerful tool. And um, I don't think I ever actually mentioned this at the beginning, but this version that I'm using right here is the Community Edition, which already comes with a ton of tools. If anyone is just a beginner or a hobbyist, just kind of playing around with hacking and messing with web applications and stuff, it's absurd the amount of value that you get just from the Community Edition. And there are also a lot of, if you go to the Extender tab, there are a lot of extensions you can get to even make things even easier to read and extend the functionality of how Burp works. The hacker community is filled with very creative and smart people. They come up with all these extensions. Someone, Some random hacker from Argentina or wherever will be working on something and they'll just come up with some sort of roadblock, roadblock and be like, this thing I'm looking at is um, too hard to deal with. It, it's not readable. I need to make this easier to work with. So someone will um, come up with a extension to make things easier. They'll import it into Burp and post it up on GitHub. And then other people who use Burp can pull it down and start using it. It's very cool how many super useful and really impressive things have come out just from like the hacker community over the years. To recap, um, we set up the um, emulator using some of these um, command line flags, which is the whole reason that way back at the beginning, we wanted to learn how to run this using the command line and not just from the, um, from the interface. And using those command line flags, um, we were able to get into the deeper file system of the application and change permissions. And we needed to do that because to use Burp Suite, we needed to import a certificate from Burp. And because Android updated their security policies a few years ago with NuGet, it's not so easy to just drag and drop and click and install a certificate. So we had to go through some commands to change that certificate file and rename it. And then we had to move it to a proper directory on the device and change the permissions on that file on the device once it was there. And then once we had that certificate, we then used that um, HTTP proxy flag on the emulator to point it to that um, IP address where we were hosting that um, listener in Burp. And then of course, once we had the proxy set up and listening, then we looked through some HTTP requests and were able to inspect them and edit them and change them and do whatever we wanted to do with those requests and see the response as well.